This is a Panorex from a patient that we removed thirds on a couple of weeks ago, 17-year-old female. I use this as an example because we were able to do some interoperative photos over the shoulder with an iPhone when my surgical assistants was able to do that from a distance, and I thought they made pretty good images so we could discuss this topic. This is one of the most common questions I get asked from other dentists and other dental colleagues is how I approach lower thirds or flap design for third molars. So we're going to go over it real quick here. This is the preoperative image uh, focused on number 32, of course. I will look initially at the second molar, tooth number 31 in this case. My whole flap design is an envelope flap. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how I learned this. It's a simple concept in my mind. There are a tremendous number of different names of incisions and flaps that historically have been used in oral surgery. My mentors that I trained under, we simplified it. We had the basic envelope flap that you're all familiar with that I'm going to show you here. Then there's the three corner flap when you take a, an envelope flap and you do one vertical releasing incision. And then there's the four corner flap when you do two vertical releasing incisions. Those are the basic three flap designs and incision designs that I've used to do 99% of my oral surgery in my two decades of oral surgery practice. I don't vary from that. I mean, I've done some different ones over the time, but for the most part, all the heavy lifting done with those three basic flap design concepts. In this case, I look to the distal buckle cusp of the second molar, number 31 here. I am going to make an incision along the crestal ridge, the buckle aspect of the crestal ridge. I'm going to come straight forward along the distal buckle of number 31. I will swing around the neck of the tooth. And as you'll see in a later image, I'll release the papilla here. This just relaxes the flap where it's a little less tension on it when I reflect it back here. And I'll show you a little tip or a little trick that I use to help get better visualization of uh, the third molar. Now, I will make a comment about this particular case. Just as a side note, you can see here there is a little tissue aberration right here. There's some non-attached soft tissue or mucosa that attached right distal to the tooth. So it's an interesting little twist on how I typically do my flap design, which is straight off the distal. In this case, I elected to go along this little natural groove here to see what would happen. And here it is. So I went and followed that little line angle in the soft tissue, and when I released it, that almost went back to my original intended design, which is straight off the distal buckle line angle of tooth number 31. Now what I'll do here is I'll use a periosteal elevator. I use a nine molt and I'll lift up the flap and I'll make a pocket or an envelope. Once that is created, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to show you this is my little this is my little tip or my little trick that I use. Here is a Here is a Minnesota retractor, and I've got the soft tissue reflected, but I only have the superficial or the mucosa reflected. This right here is periosteum. So I've lifted the flap up. I've pulled the mucosa back with my buckle uh, retraction using the Minnesota, and I've exposed the periosteum. This is a little envelope, a little, little pocket that I've made here. I will take, in this case, I use Dean scissors, and I'll make a little 45-degree snip or incision into that periosteum. I also use a 15-blade. This, For some reason, I just picked up Dean scissors in this case, which I normally don't do. I use a 15-blade, and I'll make that little 45-degree or hockey stick incision that we hear so much about in oral surgery on lower thirds. And I'll just incise that periosteum, almost like a split thickness kind of approach, but I don't make it full thickness where I have that full thickness 
45 degree angle incision off the distal. This allows me to lift and pull that soft tissue flap open to give me good visualization. And here is what it looks like once I've completed that little 45 degree right here. Let me change colors there to make it a little bit easier to see. Right here. That's my little 45 degree incision into the periosteum. This is buckle bone right through here. I'm going to do my buckle bone trough along the buckle of number 32. I'll switch colors here again to show you right here. You can see my little papillae release. Now, I don't strip that all the way down to the facial bone of the mandible or anything. I'll just pop it loose. I'll make a little incision with the 15 blade, pop it loose, uh, again, to release some tension on that where I can get better access. And, and you can see, I mean, you can see the the outline of the number 32 pretty well right here to do what I need to do uh, to get that tooth out. The beauty of this design, I don't traditionally use sutures in my thermolar cases. If I have passive tissue repositioning to a pre-surgical uh, position, I don't use sutures. These things are laid passively and in place, and I traditionally don't use sutures. So this is the reason I use this flap, and it works well for me. Now, I will tell you, this is what I do. I'm not one to sit here and say this is the right way and everything else is wrong. I'll never be the one to hear. You'll hear, never hear me say that. It's different. It's different if you do something else. What you do may be different, but it's not wrong. What I do here is not the only way and the right way, if you will. So this is just an example of how I do a lower third molar case in regards to flap design. I entertain any comments, any questions, any concerns, any suggestions. If you have something that you uh, have found that works in regards to lower third molars that, that I 